Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. I'm going to allude to a lot of different fictional stories today, fictional movies, in trying to get these points across. I watched a movie a couple nights ago called The Purge Anarchy. I had seen the, the other one about a year ago and didn't really think the second one was going to, you know, really deliver, but it actually did. Pretty crazy movie, and I definitely recommend uh, any prepper take a look at it. Because I think there, as much as it's a fictional account, there are some uh, thought-provoking points in the movie. And it made me think of a variety of issues related to socioeconomic status and shit hits the fan. Now, the idea is that I'm currently pondering revolve around the notion that, you know, a lot of preppers are concerned when we talk about WROL, you know, a lot of us are, are concerned with the, the looters, you know, a lot of us project our own needs and desires and personalities onto other people. And what I mean by that is that we assume that the primary motive for the looter, and there's different types of uh, scavengers I'm going to talk about, we assume that the primary motive is one of you know, necessity, that they need something and they're going to take it. And I suppose in that respect, if, you know, a looter could be anybody, a looter could be a single mom with three children who's just trying to steal some food for her kids, you know. The morality of that is entirely subjective. But there's also, further along that spectrum, you get into the marauder types who are going beyond their physical necessity meeting their physical needs and they're going more into meeting their depraved sociopathic needs and even further still beyond the marauder i mean you have the marauders that go and you know they're kind of shit disturbers they steal they loot but they still you know have as a an interest in preserving their their needs. They still do it because they're trying to meet their needs. They choose not to explore more constructive ways of doing so. They go right to, you know, stealing, looting, and pillaging. And then you have the psychopaths. And this is what sort of uh, a thought that was provoked by the movie is that most people are commonly in fear of the quote unquote zombies of the apocalypse, you know. And, of course, zombies are a metaphor for the unprepared, or at least that's what the consensus is now at this point. Uh, the zombies are the ones who are, you know, of the lower socioeconomic status, and they're the unprepared, and they're very predictable, very sort of one-dimensional beings who just operate on their most primal instincts. But if you ever watch most zombie movies, 9 out of 10 zombie movies, the main protagonists aren't the, or sorry, the main antagonists aren't the zombies themselves. They're the people. They're your peers. Your cohorts. Those who exist within the same status society as you. And so what I mean by this is that Yes, you know, there is a legitimate threat of looters and even marauders to some extent. But I don't think that's the primary thing that people should be concerned about. Yes, in the first parts, you have to be concerned about that. But those are sort of the, that's sort of the one dimensional issue that's going to be easily quelled. I shouldn't say easily, but, you know, it's not the poor people you have to worry about it's the people who have their needs met but are psychopaths and whether 
not to say anything about, you know, the legitimacy of our monetary system or not, but you have to admit that you don't get rich being nice. You don't. And you don't get prosperous and wealthy by being very nice. Thus, there is a correlation or predict or predictive relationship between psychopathy and success within our society. I'm not saying all people, obviously, you know, this is a small fraction of successful people might have these characteristics, but in order to, to get to the top, you kind of need to be a little ruthless. And so that psychopathy in the movie, the purge anarchy you have, and this is going to be a bit of a spoiler, but you have the wealthy people who are the most sadistic of all, or they're depicted as such. And it doesn't surprise me because they are also the most repressed. You know, I mean, who goes and hunts uh, lions in the Serengeti for sport? You know, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, Joe Blow who's just trying to feed his family and goes and hunts a deer or something like that. You know, uh, it's people with these very grandiose, egomaniacal senses of self who, you know, want to project themselves onto the world. And so I'm not really too afraid of the poor looting, scavenging, the bottom feeders of the society. I would be more concerned with those who are prepared and have the, not only that, but have the capacity, who the people who have the $4,000 guns and the, you know, all the fancy technology, you know, fear the, the super prepper, you know, and, or fear the closet super prepper, not even the prepper. I shouldn't say that. Uh, just, you know, be, be mindful of the fact that, you know, sometimes the most insane people in this world are wearing suits and they're in, you know, they're, they're, they are green on because they're, they're blending in. And just because someone, you know, only makes $10,000 a year and has a bunch of tattoos doesn't mean that they're necessarily a bad person. You know, there's a lot of really sick, twisted people out there who are the most clean cut people you'll ever meet. You know, uh, so I just don't think that you can, that you can, that you, you want to stereotype people on the basis of how they look or where they're coming from. That's not to say that all the, you know, poor people are not a threat per se, like in the sense that they're, they're stupid or anything like that. By, by no means am I saying that the street mentality is uh, a wise mentality, but I don't think it's one that's going to be used to try to subdue preppers as much as the crazy socio psychopath who has no empathy. And, and that's another thing to keep in mind is that psycho psychopathy is basically the, the absence of empathy. And, and that's how you become successful. That's how you're rewarded within this paradigm. Yes, there's philanthropy, but philanthropy only comes after you're a multi-billionaire, you know, but the purge anarchy, they really get into the, uh, how the whole purge universe, how that fictional universe functions outside of, you know, just one man's home, which was sort of the the plot for the first movie. This one really goes into the downtown and you see all the rioting and the the looting and the just like the crazy killing and stuff like that. And it touches a lot on the socioeconomic issues related to such. And there's even it even gets into some people who are against the purge and who view it as uh you know uh, serving other needs that go beyond, you know, what is stated, what it's stated to be about. 
So just some things for you to keep in mind that not all bad guys are... Actually, the, the baddest of bad guys don't look like bad guys. Because the baddest of bad guys are intelligent. There's no... Uh, there's no predictive relationship between psychopathy and idiocy. Meaning that in order to, to exhibit psychopathic traits, typically you're above average intelligence. Because you're uber rational, you know, you're... Um, what was the Ayn Rand uh, uh, objectivism? You know, you're, you're uber... You know, you just see everything as, as you see people as meat and human resources and you're totally emotionless and flat, effective. So these people are not stupid, you know. Uh, it's dumb to assume that, that uh, you can attribute it to socioeconomic status. In a lot of ways, poor people are very sharing and very, you know, they're not, they don't have that desire to necessarily get ahead, you know, that, and to be better than others. And I mean, you know, you could argue this in a lot of different ways. Poor people is a very general thing, you know, there's poor people who are trying to get ahead and there's poor people who are content where they are and there's poor people who are getting poor. So, but be careful who you, you know, who you've been conditioned to believe is a good guy and a bad guy. Because it is just conditioning at the end of the day. And it may, it may spell your demise to trust in those who are well-dressed on the outside and pretty nasty on the inside. And then sometimes people are really good on the inside and really nasty on the outside. And what that's what I've come to found, find in life is that those who are the most proper and polished on the outside have a lot of dark secrets inside. So... Mind the looters, mind the scavengers, mind the marauders. But most of all, be mindful of the psychopaths. Be mindful of the governors and the... Uh, what the hell was the guy's name in Terminus? You know, the ones who can put on a big show and smile before they stab you in the back. You know, be mindful of your peers and your cohorts. Because that same mentality, too, that desires to prep is a desire to control. You know, as preppers, we are control freaks to some extent. We want to control, have a, a certain degree of control over the situation, and that's a good thing. But just remember that for some people, it's an obsession. And when it becomes an obsession to a point of... Uh, detriment to other aspects of their lives or to others. That's when the prepping won't stop at your doorstep where you, you want to keep expanding outwards and expanding outwards just to be safe and to be safer and to be safer still. And that's where, you know, the, the, you have some preppers who wouldn't be content just controlling their house. You know, they wouldn't feel safe if they just had control of their house. They'd want to control their street. Then they'd want to control their neighborhood. Then they'd want to control their city and their region and their province or state and so on. There is definitely an element of power hungriness to all of this prepping stuff. So yes, be be wary of preppers. Some of them, not all of them. Be wary of everybody, but not to a paranoid extent, obviously, but just use your head and just take note of the fact that, you know, the devil comes well-dressed. 
know, he's not going to come, uh, he's not going to come all tatted up and with a bunch of scars on his face and, you know, with a, with a mean look on his face. I mean, that that's the easy, those are the easy ones to take care of because they right out say, Hey, I'm bad. Come get me. Those are the easy ones. So let me know what you think about psychopathy and SHTF. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.